Good morning, everyone. I thought I'd start today's vlog through the magic of editing to uh, start here in almost high tide, about midway high tide. And then uh, through the magic of editing, I'll be standing here at low tide in the flats. And now through the magic of editing, I'm no longer in the water. The tide is out. Of course, now the sun is also behind me. <laughs> but I just thought it would be fun to uh, start our day off this way. So let's get started with today's vlog. As I was mentioning, as the tide increases in its height, it also increases or decreases at a great uh, lengths. And so we get what we call the flats. And uh, we can walk right out into the harbor. So where you've seen the big waves crashing, I can just walk right out in there. So let's head on out. So as you can see, we have the flats. So I thought I'd start today's video by saying welcome. Let's go out on our beach walk today, out into what's normally the sea and the harbor and look at the sandy flats, come on. So you can see where I'm standing now would normally be under the sea. Uh, it's a great time to uh, go shell fishing, look for treasures, hidden things. Sometimes I'll drop things when I'm treasure collecting and snorkeling in the summer and I always find them during the flat time. So look how far out I can walk. All the way out here, isn't it funny? So let me turn you around and you can see our funny old house from here. But let me just turn you around. You can see how far out into the bay we are. There's the uh, edge of the boathouse and there's the big rock which we usually see from the beach. And then our funny old little old 50s house all ramshackle up on the hill. And if I chose to, which I often do, I could walk straight across to the sandy bit across the way. And in fact, in the summer, we usually swim across this harbor to swim over there in the sandy bits. But I'm going to take the camera off and show you some of the great bits facing downwards. And this is why we have wellies. <laughs> Although, to here, now, as the flats get more severe over the next few days of the tide, this will even drain completely out. In fact, this may still drain out completely today and it'll be almost completely dry. But you can see all of the uh, rocks uh, with seaweed on, just lying prostrate, waiting for the sea ret to return. And look, here's a little fellow who didn't make it. Poor little guy. See, he, could, he didn't make it out in time, but thus is the sea. He would make a great sketch, actually. I've actually come out and caught these before and saved them and I usually in the summer I have a little aquarium going of the local stuff I put in for a few days at a time and then I take back out. Oh. And here we can see burrowing down probably a little crab. So yes, so I can walk straight across to the neighbors and as I said we normally swim across but so you can see how the bay opens up. And out there, which I haven't shown yet, out in the distance is actually the entrance to the, the big Cape Cod Canal. And we often get large container ships and even cruise ships out there. I need to share that sometime. So yes, and there's the uh, tripod waiting for me patiently. So I just wanted to share this bit of the beach as well. All the fun treasures. I can find and what an amazing environment it is here. Every day it changes. It's it's like having your house stationary, but someone on a roll of paper is twisting your scenery every day so you have a new view. Well, that's a pretty rock. So um yes. I think this is a fun start to a vlog, don't you? Oh, 
I'm so, so excited because, foolishly or not, I just purchased a 1950 vintage stove. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so lovely. In fact, I'm going to try to, through editing power, put the stove image up in the corner, which is how I saw it on Facebook Marketplace, which is how this whole saga began. If you'd seen my uh, previous vlog, a really early vlog, I showed the kitchen here in the main house, Bunny Hall, which was put up in 1950. It actually was put up as a bunkhouse for a bigger part of the house, but that's another story. I showed you the kitchen and it's a hideous 1970s creation. Now the cabinets and things are wood and it has a tile floor, but I want to redo the entire thing. However, we do not have deep pockets and things here living on the sea are very expensive, including taxes. So we are not ready to do the kitchen over. However, I couldn't help it. I wanted to do vintage things, of course. So I fell in love with the stove and talk about putting the car before the horse. I purchased the stove, even though we haven't even begun to think about what it's going to cost to move the plumbing and to change things around in the kitchen. So. Now the story is we moved, I ordered, I, I got the stove and I almost didn't get it because it was, uh, the price it was, um, was out of my price range when I had to pay for shipping because I couldn't go pick it up myself. I had to have someone else do it. And the gentleman who was selling it wanted me to have it so badly that he came down in price so that I could afford to have the moving men bring it. And then the moving man fell through. So he had his painters, who are these lovely Brazilian gentlemen, come and deliver it for me for that same price. And the reason he wanted to make sure I had it was because as we were going back and forth talking about it, um, he knew I should have the stove. And the story of the stove was that it's been in his wife's and his home. It was his wife's family's summer home in Chatham, which is a part of the Cape, since it was it was a brand new stove in 1950 installed then and they'd been using it up until this year and this year they finally decided to redo their kitchen and their children made them promise that it would go to a home to someone who would love it and use it and between our talking back and forth he realized I wanted us to make a sympathetic vintage kitchen and that it would be have pride of place and be loved. So in order to have it delivered safely and not put it in the kitchen while things have to be done there and who knows when that can be done I had it moved to our boathouse apartment which I've shown a little bit of the boathouse in a previous vlog. I showed the vlog I showed the uh, lower level where the boats used to be stored that I want to eventually make over. But it's a multi-layered building and where it was moved to is actually an old apartment that we used to stay in in the early 2000s when the main house was still lived in by the grandparents and we lived in Boston. We would come down here for the summer or for weekends and that's where we would stay. However, since then and since we've become the caretakers of this property, the boathouse apartment has just been basically a catch-all glorified shed. It has piles of, it has bags of chicken feed, it has surplus gardening supplies, but yet it does still have a kitchenette and a bathroom in there and it has plumbing and electricity, even though it's a big mess. Long story short, if anyone's still listening, <laughs> God love you. I had the, the stove delivered. Oh, and let me show a little few clips of that because the gentleman, the Brazilian gentleman who came here were super nice and they loved my roosters because my chickens are currently really close to the boathouse where the stove is now being stored. And they were so excited about it because they said uh, they used to keep the same type of small bantam chickens in their own country in, in uh, Brazil when they lived there. So they were pretty excited and they were very, very friendly. It wasn't meant to stay in the boathouse, but here's my question to you as viewers. When I moved it into place, it was in a spot where we used to have an old stove there back years ago. And then that broke and it got taken out and we didn't care because we were only there sometimes. And but I always, when we lived there, I'd always thought, oh, I wish I could make this over into a darling little cottage. Because at the time, we didn't really think we were ever going to be the caretakers of the main part of the house. But life changes. When it was wheeled into place, again, it's the romantic in me. But I think there's just something about how it's set in its location, which I'm show either showing you now or I've showed you previously in my editing, that it feels like it wants to stay there. So... Again, to my query to you, my viewers, I don't have the money to do over the main kitchen in the main house now, but I could, because the boathouse apartment is more like a fun play place, a place that I'd like to fix up for us to use, especially if we ever have to live in it, if we ever have to let the main house to help keep this house in the future, I would like to have it nice for us. And I've always dreamed of it being like a sort of a fun arts and crafts cottage sort of mixed with, say, like... 1920s and then the 1950 stove would make it look like that's the most modern piece that would add it was added to it while the rest of it was more vintage but would you be interested as viewers in besides watching me do my artwork and other things and rambling on and sharing my beach walks would it be of interest of you if I were decided to keep that stove in there 
as its home and to try to make over the little galley kitchen into a fun little playful, brightly colored fun kitchen, basically like a tiny house. Because that the garden around that building also needs to all be redone because we had dug out, my husband by hand, dug out a 150 feet, four feet deep trench to redo our old water line, which was all copper and had broken and we had no water. So all the yard is being dug up over there. So the whole project could really be like an interesting, fun, basically like a tiny house by the sea makeover on the cheap. So if any of that seems interesting to you, let me know in the comments if you would be interested in watching me do that or if you think it's even a good idea or should I let the stove wait there patiently until we can afford to have the main kitchen done and then move it in there. Um, not that if we, when we can afford the main kitchen that we couldn't still move the stove if we wanted. So, but again, I'm just excited. Yay, vintage stove. And this owner's manual, which is exciting to me to think that the people who bought this brand new, this has been sitting in their cabinets in their summer cottage since 1950 when they bought it. It's a little worse for wear with some mouse chewing on the edges. But besides how to care for the oven, there are some, it looks like there might be some recipes in here, or at least things that tell you how to can properly, things like that. So I just think it would be a fun project. All right, well, I've rambled on long enough about my vintage stove, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, another part of this vlog was uh, some commenters had mentioned they thought it would be fun to include the hedgehog from Lalande in the book, which is not a book that I'm working on. So I thought that would be kind of fun. So I did a rough sketch, and I'm going to share that now. And again, the sketch is very, very rough. It is literally just a pencil and then a little bit of watercolor, so don't expect much of it. But I thought of she being um, sort of like a housewifery, um, housekeeper slash ladies maid type of character in the house so that Thor asks her to create a beautiful frock for the Peachick who was Ian number four but we come to find out is Ivy because she is actually he is actually a she because she's the a peahen not a Peachick and she was sad that she wouldn't have the right plumage of her father and so her father asks the hedgehog who could be the little mob capped um, ladies maid slash servant, um, not that a ladies maid would wear a mop hat, um, to make the frock for um, Ivy. So I'm going to share that sketch next, a quick sketch, and then I also might through Photoshop slide it onto the sketch I already made of um, Ivy and the, and Ivy and uh, Ruby in the kitchen, because through the magic of Photoshop I can just do that. And we can decide do we want the hedgehog to be part of that scene or do I want to make another page that's just about the hedgehog and ivy with the frock. I still think that overall it's going to be a book that is not a book and that I just want to keep making pages as much as the spirit hits me to make pages as if they came from a book with text and like the finished look of how I would like it to be but I don't know if it will be a coherent story or have any actual like blend to it but if you're still interested in me making funny um, pages for this book that doesn't exist then I will keep doing it because I'm having fun with it. All right. Okay, I've made a huge mess of editing for myself today because it's Sunday and I have to get this out tomorrow and now I've talked and rambled and I have footage of this and footage of that. So somehow I'm going to put this together. So if you're watching me talk now, I somehow managed Sunday to get this edited and out Monday. All right, let's get to it. So I want to save the boathouse for many other vlogs, but in order to show you my amazing new stove, we have to go walk out to the boathouse and you'll see all this dredged up soil is the hole we had to dig this summer 150 feet of it four feet deep to get our new water line put in which was all done by hand and refilled by hand so but for now let's go out to the boathouse and you can hear my roosters which are kept next to the boathouse so right now the boathouse has many floors and it's a pretty big size building so let's go inside and I'll show you the stove and here we are inside the boathouse apartment and the boathouse has many levels again i'll share that on another vlog but for now we're in the apartment which has sort of become a catch-all garden shed uh, animal feed room for me which is a shame because it has plumbing and bathroom and it used to be the apartment we stayed in when we lived in the city back in the early 2000s but for now it is just a catch-all so because i'm nowhere near getting the kitchen done i saw this on Facebook Marketplace and I started speaking with a man and it just really, really spoke to me. But just a quick view for the boathouse and the reason why I may be doing this project I'm gonna be telling you about, or I've probably already told you about, depending on how I edit, is um, because this is a lovely view. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up because I don't have the settings on, but if you look out this window, you can see the sea is out there 
and even though all these trees are blocking it, these used to be cleared down to low shrubs and we could have a lovely view of the sea from this area where I've set the stove as a holding place, but it may be not just a holding place because this little area has a tiny, tiny little kitchen that is in much need of a repair. The old dishwasher broke. Um, and there's actually a lovely view of the woods. That's our property line. And as I said, the sea is out there. So, but my main point of this part of the video is I just wanted to show that I got the stove. So um, I think I'm just gonna talk about it to you on the terrace. So I'm not sure how this is going to be edited, but I'll either have already told you or I'm going to tell you after this. All right, let's talk about it. Well, that video may have seemed like an odd collection of things, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And uh, please let me know in the comments if you would be interested in uh, me uh, having part of the videos in the future be about me possibly making over the tiny uh, galley kitchen in the boathouse apartment. And um, I may, I really kind of want to work on that project a bit more. Uh, and it's a nice counterpart to artwork and such. And also uh, let me know in the comments if you think I should continue making random pages for our book, which is not a book, for Chateau de la Lande. Um, I did find out today in the chats as we were um, chatting on the land that I um, that Ruby is actually a male cat. And I don't know why I did not know that, <laughs> but I know in my current sketch, I definitely sketched it as if Ruby were a girl. So I'm going to have to think about that one. But I hope you enjoyed uh, today's uh, random assortment in our video, and I will see you on Wednesday. Let's head on out. Well, thank you for joining me today at An Artist's Life. Hope you enjoyed our fun and beach walk and the other things we did today. I will see you on our next vlog. And remember to stay creative. Cheers.